Hi there, I'm Chris and welcome to The Better Life. In this video, I'm going to speak about how to build muscle mass. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about how to absolutely bulk up like a power lifter or anything like that, but it's important that I address this because as much as I might talk about um, how good it is to build you know, aerobic fitness and be functional and be able to run around with your family and all that kind of stuff, the fact is that the most common goal that I find members training for is to build muscle mass now whether that's just about you know achieving a cover model body or whether that's just to be a little bit more substantial in the physique and you know just feel not so skinny um, it's just the fact that most clients most members are looking to build muscle particularly guys now that's fine that's really great it's important to define the goal and be honest about what that is because as I've said in a different video about the components of fitness, you really need to define your goal and then train appropriately for that. That being said, it's very easy to walk the gym floor, you know, um, keep an eye on the members and it's very easy to see what people are actually training for. But then also it's very easy to spot the very common mistakes that they will be making, which is ultimately just going to mean that, you know, they miss their goals, they don't achieve those. And you know the saddest thing about that is that after a few months of trying, you might assume that it's your genetics or that you're a hard gainer, and you know your motivation fails and you go and reach for a donut. Now that isn't what we want. So in this video, I'm going to speak about essentially the most common mistakes that I spot when I'm on the gym floor, and the most common advice I end up giving to those members. Okay, firstly, it's shyness, self-consciousness. Now, particularly with new members. You know, they'll join up with the gym, they'll be set on their goals, I want to go and build some muscle, I want to add to my physique. But then they go into the gym, they've paid their membership, the gym belongs to them as much as anyone else. And yet self-consciousness and shyness sets in. Now particularly this means that especially new members will stroll on in and they'll hide away. They'll go on the easy looking machines, the machines that don't have most people near them. Uh, going into the free weights area is just, oh my God, I'm not going in there. It's full of all the big guys and I'll feel silly. Now self-consciousness is going to really hold you back. Okay, um, a lack of confidence, being self-conscious, feeling shy is going to hold you back. Now you need to realize that you've paid your membership. You need to realize that the gym belongs to you as well. The equipment is there for you to use to achieve your goals. Now going to the gym for a few months to be shy is not gonna help you achieve your goals. So this is one of the first things that you really need to overcome. Now, how can you do this? The best way is to actually book your gym induction. It's, a, it's incredible how many members don't actually book their gym induction, spend half an hour being shown around the gym, how the different machines work. And if they don't do that, then obviously they're going to feel a bit uncertain. Now, often I find myself giving unofficial gym inductions because, you know, someone's just saying, how does this work? How do I operate these machines? And it just takes a few minutes to say, hey, that's fine. This is what we do. All these parts are the adjustable points. And this is a, a simple guide on, you know, the positions that you want to reach. That's as complicated as a gym induction gets. And you'll also get loads of other information about perhaps how to, you know, start off with some cardio, warm your muscles up warm up your body, get into that right mentality. And, you know, obviously then you'll be shown most often resistance machines, which are safer for beginners. Now, this is a friendly, easy process. It's going to help you feel more at home. It's gonna help you feel more confident in the gym. And as a result of that, you're going to feel more confident in just trying out a few more exercises and getting onto the equipment that you really should be using. But really, just don't forget that it is your gym. You've paid your membership. Don't be shy about the fact that you're not yet bulked up, okay? You need to have the confidence that you are on a journey, you've decided to make that journey, and that is the same journey that all of these conditioned people that look so intimidating. You're on the same journey, they're just a few miles ahead. And most often, you know, if you ask someone for a few tips, they'll be flattered that you think of them as someone that can help, okay? Everyone's really friendly. So try not to be self-conscious. You can use your gym induction, you can use an initial, at my gym at least, you know, a half hour PT session, which really gets a bit more in depth. And all of these things are gonna help you feel more confident. They're gonna help you utilize the equipment that's there. 
and let's just remember that is why you're there okay you're not going there just to be shy like a school disco hanging around on the on the side walls aside from all of the other things that I'm gonna talk about in this video, this is one of the biggest barriers, is that people are too shy and self-conscious. So how can you overcome that? Book your gym induction, book any additional PT sessions, get your confidence up, and then just acknowledge the fact that you are on a journey, the same journey as all of these other conditioned people, and they're just a few miles ahead. And honestly, if you're wondering about respect, you know, get into that free weights area. These people respect you a lot more than the guy that's in the pub eating peanuts and putting on more weight, okay? You are one of the club. You are one of the members, okay? And just remember that. So no hiding by the sides, no looking at equipment from afar, okay? You need to get involved. You need to realize why you're there. Okay, second barrier is that, you know, you've gotten over that confidence hurdle. You're ready to jump in. Now it's about what equipment you choose to use. Now, if your goal is to build muscle mass, if your goal is to increase your size, then you really need to be staying away from all of these isolation moves. Now, again, this comes back to the self-consciousness thing. Um, it's much easier to go along, grab a dumbbell, hide by the side, and do a few non-invasive to anyone else curls, okay? Now that's fine, I understand why you're doing that. But actually you need to have the confidence again it comes to confidence but you need to choose the correct exercises and these are the ones that might make you feel like more of a spectacle okay so again that comes back to reason number one but you need to choose the right exercises what are these for building muscle mass you need to engage the biggest muscles in your body the, the biggest muscle groups now essentially you know to do a bicep curl you can see this is just a very this is a one muscle being used i'm pulling this arm up i'm just using this bicep here that's not utilizing bigger muscle groups what we want to do is engage the bigger muscle groups in our body. And this is not only going to challenge more of our muscles in one go and really utilize the time in our workout, but it's also going to stimulate our body to release more growth hormones. Where we're gonna kick off that physiological event in our body that stimulates muscle growth. So what we need to do is get onto those big spectacle moves, okay? So be confident, go and choose the right moves. What are these? Well, firstly, your workout should be based around compound movements. These are the movements where you are using at least two joints. So for example, if I was to perform a bench press, okay, this is even a one-armed bench press, okay, um, I'm pulling my arm back and you can see that I'm moving my shoulder joint and my elbow, okay? That is a compound move. That is utilizing more muscles in one movement. It's kickstarting the hormones, it's getting everything going. And because you are recruiting more muscles, you're able to shift more weight. And that means that your body's going to have to work harder, okay? The heavier the weight you're, that you're shifting, the, the harder your body has to work, the more hormones are stimulated. That's what's going to build mass onto your body. Okay, so compound movements, what are these? They are the bench press. They are the shoulder press. You see how my joints are moving there, two at once. A leg press, we're moving our hip and our knee. You might uh, envision that being a squat. I can't really demonstrate that here. Other ones is that for the back, we've got the pull up. See how those are moving at two joints, okay? Now, this is very different to other ways that we can exercise the chest. So, for example, um, a bit of a fad at the moment is to get a dumbbell, hold it by the side. I really can't demonstrate here, I apologize for that. And flexing the, the pec, we would bring that dumbbell up, okay? Now, this, this is a bit of a faddy move at the moment. It's a great move, but for building initial muscle mass, you need to be focusing on those big lifts, which means you've got a heavier weight. It means you're recruiting more muscles, which means you're stimulating more growth hormones in your body. You are kickstarting everything as you should. So, rule number two is choose the right exercises. For that, you need compound lifts. Easiest way to remember how to do that is, or to figure out what they are, is in the joint movement. We want to be moving two joints at once. So that would be the row, that would be the lat pull down, 
that would be the shoulder press, that would be the bench press, that would be the um, squat or leg press. As a quick example, if you're sticking to resistance machines just to start out, which is a good move, then you've got the choice of the leg press, which is where you sit and you extend your leg uh, using your hip and your knee joints. I'm doing that down here, but you can't see that. Um, otherwise, you've got the leg extension, which is again, you're sitting there and you're just bending at the knee. One of those uses two joints, the other one uses one. If you want to kick start your body into that real muscle mass mode, then you want to be choosing two joints. Isolation movements such as that bicep move that I just showed you, those are good, but save those for the end of your workout if you've still got a bit more to give or you want to just get a bit more pop so that you feel great, okay? So second rule, choose the right exercises, go for the compound movements, and then save your isolation uh, exercises for at the end of the workout when you've got a bit more to give. As you get more advanced, you can start to superset with compound movements and then specific isolation moves as well. That'll just help you to uh, kickstart. But that's for another, another talk. Okay, the next one is the weight that you use. Okay, now... Uh, this really comes down to Joe Bloggs next to me or Jane Bloggs next to me is using um, a much higher weight and you know this comes into competition, pride, all of that. Now there are real disadvantages to using the incorrect weight. Firstly, your form is going to suffer, all right? If you really can't move a weight safely and maintaining form, then you're going to injure yourself. You're going to end up with a popped shoulder or something like that and you essentially aren't gonna be able to work towards your goals for a while because you will have to rest. So concentrate on form over weight, all right? That's about safety and it's about you actually maximizing your gains. So don't think about the people next to you. Don't think, don't compare yourself to other people or the weight stack. Take your journey. You want to be hitting your rep range with those last few reps being quite the struggle. And if that's on a lower weight than somebody next to you, that's fine, you are on your journey, remember that. Other reason why using um, inappropriate weight or heavier weight than you should is that you're not actually going to achieve your rep range. So you do need to reach that rep range in order to work towards your goals. It's, it's scientifically proven that these are good rep ranges to work in uh, to achieve your different goals. If you've got a heavier weight because you're competing with someone next to you, then you're not going to meet that rep range which means that your time under tension, your muscles aren't working for long enough to stimulate growth in order to you know, start tearing up the fibers, which is what's going to lead to size. You really need to make sure that you are using an appropriate weight to meet your reps, to complete your sets, to work you hard, uh, but without injuring yourself, okay? So focus on yourself, don't focus on the other people, and choose an appropriate weight so that you can um, safely and efficiently uh, complete your, your exercises and your movements. Okay, so we've spoken about you know, self-consciousness, we've spoken about choosing the right exercises, we've spoken about choosing the right weight and maintaining form over uh, the idea of competing with someone next to us. So now we're on the machine, we're working with a correct weight, we're doing the right exercise. Next, we need to talk about focus. Okay, why are we there? And this is about um, keeping focused on what we're there for. It is, it's to train to our goals. It's not to sit there on our mobile. It's not to you know, sit there and chat to a few people or with our mates. We're there for a purpose. You're sitting on, let's say, the chest press resistance machine. You've got a choice on whether you sit there and doodle on your phone and get carried away and spend three minutes on Facebook when you're meant to just have a quick peek during a 45 second rest. That is not good focus, okay? Leave the phone in your locker, all right? You've paid for a membership, you've done your induction, you've planned what exercises you want to do, now you're there, you've got to sit there and work on it. So focus on your ultimate goal. Why are you there? Second point with focus is that you need to focus on the right aspect of the movement. So let's take the chest press, for example. You can focus on moving that weight stack up and down, but you shouldn't. You can focus on moving your arms, your hands forwards and backwards, but you shouldn't. 
You can focus on the fact that you've got to straighten your arm. That's what a lot of people do on the chest press. You know, it's all about straightening my arm. Wrong, okay? It's about getting your mind into that muscle right there, okay? This is the muscle that we are trying to engage with, that we are trying to use and develop. So don't focus on your hands, don't focus on the weight, don't focus on straightening your arm, don't focus on that bar and you know, oh, I'm getting it further away. You don't wanna do that. You wanna focus on this muscle here. The chest press is not about doing any of those. It's not about moving that weight. It's not about moving your arm or straightening your arm. It's about using that muscle to pull this upper arm across and in front of your body, okay? So you need to get your mind into that muscle. It sounds a bit hippie, I know that, okay? But this is about focus. And you flex that muscle and you work on pulling that upper arm across. Your hand will have to go forwards to perform that, to make that possible. Your arm will have to straighten. And as you do that, that stack of weight is going to lift. So let all that happen. What you are focusing on is flexing this muscle here and pulling that arm across using that. When our focus is wrong, we end up leaning forwards, we end up cheap moving, we, we focus on our arms to push that weight forwards, we focus on our, you know, we cheat, we, we lean forwards, and at any cost we get that bar going, and we actually leave this little fella out of the mix. We're not focused on why we are sitting on that machine and why we want to move that bar. So focus on that muscle, Bring that arm across with that muscle, okay? Engage with it, push that forwards. That is focus, and it's the kind of focus that is going to get you your gains. Now, you might feel a bit ridiculous doing this, okay? But I, I do this with members in the gym, and uh, they, they seem to really start to understand what I'm talking about. But if you just stand where you are, or you can sit, you know, whatever, okay? Hold your hands in front of you. We're, we're doing this with a chest press movement or you know a bench press. Now just move your arms forwards and backwards, okay? That's all you're doing, just do that. Uh, you feel as silly as I do? That's all right. Okay, so now I want you to stop and now I want you to flex your chest, okay? Flex your chest and focus on this being the instigator of that movement, okay? Flex, push forwards. Flex, bring your arm across your body and in front. Your hand will go forwards, okay? Your arms will straighten, okay? But focus on that. Can you feel that working a little bit more already? Can you feel that you're actually engaging with this and pushing that forwards? That's what you need to take onto the machines. That's what you need to take to the free weights bars, okay? That is the focus you need. Focus on what you're working. Same goes for any muscle on any machine or in any free weight exercise. Focus on why you are there, what it is you are working. And in doing that, you're gonna prevent the likelihood of you cheating through a rep and you know bending, twisting, you know anything else just to move a bar and a few plates. Focus, why are you there? And focus on the muscles that you're actually there to work and use and develop. Okay, we've got all of those elements into place. Now we really need to talk about your plan, okay? One of the other ways that I can really spot new members or people that don't really know how to achieve their goals, you know, on the gym floor, is that they are dithering, that they don't, they're not working to a plan, okay? That they don't have their sheet, you know, on their phone or in their hand or in their mind of what exercises they're doing. Now what's the benefit of a plan once you're actually on the gym floor? It's that there is a list to be completed, okay? Now time has gone into that plan, that's the nature of a plan, okay? You put time and thought into it. So you've got to tick everything off that list. And that list has been thought through, it's been planned to fully fatigue your muscles, to target every area, to balance your workout throughout your body. The plan is where you will succeed. It is no good, and I see this so much, walking onto the gym floor, and doing the exercises that you feel um, are quite attractive at the moment. Because the likelihood is that you are going to go, no, I don't really like that exercise, somebody's on there, I'll just skip that for today. A plan is where you can really figure out how to make your training matter, how to make it effective. And going onto the gym floor, 
There are so many distractions. Sometimes it's busy. There are so many reasons that we can justify avoiding an exercise that we find particularly painful or that we find uncomfortable or, or that we just don't enjoy. So everybody goes on, what am I particularly self-conscious about today? Oh, I really wish my arms were bigger. They'll do all the arm movements. Oh, I want to develop my chest. So they go and do their chest. Guys usually are going in doing their abs and their chest and a few biceps. Everybody leaves out the back because it's uncomfortable. Work in the back is very uncomfortable. There's, it's, it's a very tense and, and difficult movement. However, if you're really wanting to bulk up, then your back is really where you'll see bulk and size and that translates to the shoulders. So work in the chest that's relatively small, really. And if you overwork the chest without working the back, you can end up with a weird hunch. And that's also going to increase the likelihood of injury. So if you're going in and you're just doing the exercises that feel good, I'm working my chest. I'm not mocking you here. I'm just saying that it's, it's human nature. We're going to go in there and find comfort. It's why when you're exercising, your body will try and cheat and make you twist and do everything wrong just so that you can move a weight. And it's also likely that when you walk onto the gym floor, you're not gonna be so inclined to go and do those exercises that really challenge you, you know, get into the deadlift, get into the squat, work the legs at all. Guys, you're leaving the legs out all the time. It's because it's not exciting. It's not immediately gratifying. So you need that plan, okay? It's going to stop you cheating. It's gonna keep you focused. It's gonna help you get the results that you are there for. Okay, last note that I will put on this is that the gym work for building muscle mass, that is the smallest part of it. And this really comes into the plan as well, really. You don't need to just work to a plan in your workouts. You need to work to a plan in your diet. I don't like the word diet in your eating regime. The whole idea of your workouts is to essentially damage your muscles. But the whole way that they improve is actually in the repair that's when the the muscle fibers thicken that's when you're actually going to see the results so you need to be applying that same devotion and that same mindset to eating and sleeping into the repair of your muscles and this is going to really help you get those gains okay otherwise it's pointless going to the gym okay if you like this video, please do like, please do share, um, please do comment with any of your own thoughts or what you find are particular barriers to you building muscle and you know getting the results that you want. I need to remind you, please, if you go and subscribe to my newsletter, if you register at the website, you'll find some free workouts. And also if you're looking for that plan, which is one of the most important aspects of your training program, you know, you really need a good plan then uh, check out the betterlife.co.uk i've got some plans on there that you can take to the gym you can keep them on your phone and access them and that's really going to help you get the results that you want okay thank you so much for watching this video i will speak to you soon